people talk about Gandhi, yeah. but they haven't read him. Yeah. Because they think, Gandhi, non-violence. It's very simple. And he looks like a very simple person. So it mm -hmm. can't be complicated. Mm -hmm. But in fact, it is complicated. Mm -hmm. It is complicated. The most important thing about Gandhi is Gandhi valued nonviolence. That's true. But he valued courage more than nonviolence. And he was very emphatic. He said, if you don't have the courage to be nonviolent, then you better be violent. But don't go running away and say you're running away because you believe in nonviolence. Mm -hmm. He said, that's not nonviolence. That's cowardice. Mm -hmm. And he said, cowards, you know, he was very tough. Mm -hmm. He said, cowards do not deserve to live. He was very, mm -hmm. very tough on that issue. Mm -hmm. And if you don't understand that for Gandhi, his supreme value was not nonviolence, it was courage, and you don't understand Gandhi. That's why the title of my book is Courage, exclamation point, not cowardice, the Gandhian strategy of nonviolent resistance. It's not what people think. Gandhi was very emphatic. You see, for Gandhi, nonviolence took a lot more courage than violence, not as a theory, because you have to understand what he meant by nonviolence. He meant, let's say there is a war. If you're a usual soldier, you have a weapon to defend yourself, right? They're firing at you, you have a weapon to fire at them. He said, if you believe in nonviolence, what you're supposed to do, and now I'm quoting him verbatim, you're supposed to march smilingly and cheerfully into the line of fire and get yourself blown to bits. That's nonviolence for him. And as anyone can understand, it obviously takes a lot more courage than the person who has a weapon. The person without a weapon is putting his or her life at much greater risk and the person who at least has a weapon. And then if he said, if you don't have the courage to march smilingly and cheerfully into the line of fire and get blown to bits, then he said, get yourself a weapon. <laughs> yes. But don't go running that way and saying, oh, the reason I'm running is because I don't believe in violence. I'm nonviolent. Gandhi said, that's not nonviolence. That's cowardice. And he said there was nothing that filled him with more disgust than people using nonviolence as a cloak and an excuse for their cowardice. That's the real Gandhi. It's a very different Gandhi than, you know, Richard, uh, Richard Ant Attenborough's uh, Gandhi movie. And ben Kingsley. Like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. People, people don't know that's the real Gandhi, and that's what I taught. The, the real Gandhi was, uh, there's a lot in him that's, it will come really as a shock to you. I mean, there are points when um, when his followers were killed, Satyagrahis, we were called, he would send to the parents of the martyrs, he would send them letters of congratulations. Congratulations, your son has given his life for the cause. No grief, no tears. He said, what's the big deal? A life is just part of the cycle of living death, no big deal. He was, yeah, it's very unappealing, I have to tell you. Uh, the real Gandhi, I mean, it was funny. 
as you can see, I developed an affection for him, but when I gave what I actually wrote to people to read, they said to me, I think it's going to turn most people off the Gandhi, <laughs> because he seems uh, absolutely uh, callous. He, he, he would say, give speeches like, if you don't get, he says, if you're not willing to give your life, I'm not going to come speak for your group. He says, I will only come to speak for your group if I hear, and I'm quoting him, that some of you have gotten your skulls crushed. And then I'll come. He said, I will even be exhilarated if you get your skulls crushed. Yeah. You know, he was pretty tough. He was pretty tough. Uh, and as I say, it can be unappealing. Uh, at the end, though, it was impossible, I felt, not to be filled with a certain amount of awe for him. He was, in his own way, pretty remarkable in his commitment. He was really, I want to live to be 120, he said, but only because I want every last year for public service. That was it, public service. That's his phrase. The last year of his life, as I suppose all of you know, India erupted into this horrible bloodletting between the Hindus and Muslims, one of the worst massacres in the history of the world. Millions perished. And you know what Gandhi did? I'm not sure many people don't realize how he died. He would go at the last year, he went from Hindu temple to Hindu temple, and he began every prayer service by reading from the Quran. And it drove the Hindu nationalists crazy. There were literally one week in Calcutta, 10,000 bodies sprawled on the streets. It was oceans of blood. And he is going to these Hindu temples. And he says, I'm going to begin the prayer service by reading from the Quran. And it drove them mad. Until, you know, it was a Hindu nationalist that killed Gandhi, not a Muslim. And he knew he was going to die, of course. My own view is when you read the collected works, in the end he wanted to die. Because he had sent everybody else to their death. And I'm sure there was a guilt there. You know, everything I'm telling you, I'm speaking literally. He said, you better get yourself killed. If you don't get yourself killed, don't talk to me. I don't want to hear from you. At one point he said, don't tell me you went to jail. I don't care if you went to jail. What's the big deal if you went to jail? You got to get killed. You got to get your skull uh, smashed. And then he says, I'll be happy. So at some point, look, he wasn't a hypocrite. And I guess he knew he had to get killed. You know. It's quite inspiring. It really is. It's a, 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 you know, as they say, there went the men. So that's how I felt. Uh, but maybe you have to read the whole thing to appreciate him. But what comes across in the book, it's a very little book. Because I wrote it, I dedicated it to the Occupy movement. Because, you know, everyone occupies now talking about Gandhi nonviolence. So I figured, you know, we should know what the real Gandhi is saying. <laughs> uh, and uh, it may actually end up being a turnoff. <laughs> you know? <laughs> uh, you can't and, assassinate someone when they're in the grave. <laughs> <laughs> and the funny thing, I wasn't trying to assassinate. I'm just teasing. <laughs> uh, I just wanted to convey that if you say you believe in Gandhi and nonviolence, well, you should be clear about what it is and what its implications are and where it's taking you, you know. Otherwise, you could just say, I don't believe in it. But this is the real Gandhi, you know. Uh, and I didn't mean it negatively, but I, I now realize 
uh, that it could, could have come across terribly. I was kind of shocked when I read it, because it reads just like, you know, Hezbollah. It's all about martyrdom. It's all about death and martyrdom. It's like a Nasrallah speech when you read it. On the other hand, truth be told, every struggle for independence uses that language. Some of us use it in more secular terms. We say, give me liberty or give me death. Or, I regret that I have only one life to give for my country. That's not so far off from what Gandhi or Nasrallah says. Isn't that about martyrdom? I regret that I have only one life to give. For, I wish I could die twice for my country. I wish I could get killed twice. So, at some level, I don't think he's saying anything or if you give your life for the cause, it's a worthy death. It's not something to mourn. It's something to celebrate. Every culture has that. So we shouldn't be too harsh on Gandhi when it comes to that. Uh, but still, the language is quite, uh, <laughs> the language can be quite shocking. You know, some of my friends, they were reading it, because I have long excerpts, and they said, uh, who was it that was reading it? I can't remember. Somebody who had just lost a family member. And he's, he's writing to somebody whose child died at six months old. And he writes, what's the big deal? The child was, uh, died. He, he was meant to die. Because God believes, you know, in a almighty. And it was meant to happen. And he lived as long as he should have lived. And, blah, blah, blah. and you know, that's pretty cold, as the kids say. <laughs> no tears. No tears. No tears from the Mahatma. No. <laughs>